Hi there guys, Rick here. Hope you're doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Okay, let's get straight to it. Let's crack on with today's lesson. Um, recently I've been playing around with this specific right hand picking technique and uh, I'm pretty obsessed with it to be honest. Uh, I posted it on Instagram a day or two ago and uh, I've been playing it non-stop and it yields some pretty fantastic sounds to be honest, especially if you mix it with techniques like muting technique and so on and um, trying different ways of articulating the same pattern. So we're gonna get straight onto it. I'm gonna show you the pattern itself and we're gonna apply it to three different arpeggios. And then what we're gonna do is um, extend those arpeggios just a little, just to create a little bit more color uh, than a standard seventh arpeggio. So what am I doing exactly? Well, let me show you. We're gonna start in the, in, um, the key of A. So we're gonna play, our first arpeggio is an A major seven arpeggio. Uh, and then we're gonna play an A dominant arpeggio, and then we're gonna play an A minor seven arpeggio. Okay, so let's start with the A major seven. So let me show you what the picking pattern is. Majority of the time, it's just a downstroke and then middle finger. So with the hybrid picking, I'm using just my middle finger with these exercises. So. Um, let me show you what the picking pattern is. It goes as follows, nice and slowly. Down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, pull off, middle, down, middle. Okay. Okay, and when we um, descend, we're just gonna reverse, um, reverse exactly what we played. Okay, at the top here, I like to, once I've done the um, middle finger here, I'm gonna pull off and then hammer on. What, I've, what you've gotta be careful of here is that what I like to do is bar, like that. So you've gotta be careful. You don't want the notes to bleed together. So just a little bit of attention there and it should solve the problem. Okay, then we're gonna play middle. Uh, what do I do there? <laughs> yeah, down, hammer, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down. So all together, nice and slowly. Okay, just to add a bit of... Um, um, bit of a cool sound, what I like to do is mute. Sounds really, really cool. Um, so I kind of like mix it in as and when I feel like doing it. So there we have it, that's the picking pattern. And the picking pattern stays consistent through each arpeggio shape. So once we've learned it for this, uh, we apply the same picking pattern to each arpeggio, which makes life a lot easier. So what we can do is apply it to a different arpeggio. So all we're gonna do is flatten the seventh degree of the arpeggio. So we're playing a A7, A dominant seventh arpeggio. So all we have to do is lower seventh degree on those two strings, the D and the B. Easy, easy. So same pattern, nice and slowly. Okay, just because we're playing with the right hand exactly the same picking pattern doesn't mean it's gonna be easy to do. We're gonna to have to get used to the specific shapes. Um, you know, we have to train our fingers to do specific things, you know, for muscle memory. So some shapes will be easier than others. So um, the most important thing is that you apply the same level of focus to each individual arpeggio, okay? So once more. Be 
careful of the fingering as well, that really makes a big difference. Sometimes I play it, I put the fifth here. <laughs> so just experiment, see what's, what works for you. So, and then finally our minor seven arpeggio. So we've already got the flat seven, we've just got to lower the third. So. So that's our minor seven. Okay, now we have our three different arpeggios. Uh, you're going to have to practice these quite hard. Um, some will be more comfortable than others, as I said, but that just means you've got to put a little bit more effort in to the ones you feel a little bit more uncomfortable with. You know, nothing wrong with good old fashioned hard work. Um, okay, so let's take it uh, up a notch. What we're going to do is just change one of the notes or. Um, we're extending it a little further, so the next logical extension will be to add the ninth. Um, so that's what we're going to do with each arpeggio, just to add a little bit more colour. Okay, so we're going to start with the major seven, so we're going to go... It stays exactly the same for the first one, two, three, four, five notes. But instead of playing root seventh, we're going to go ninth seventh. Okay, let me do that again. Okay, so that's our new pattern. And then we can descend. You're gonna have to be careful with this one because there's some more wood here. When you, when you do shifts like this, it's very hard, especially when you're playing up to tempo, to keep everything really nice and smooth. Um, so it's gonna need a lot of work. Just keep it steady, don't worry about you know playing it too fast um, too soon. Great sound. Okay, let's move on to our dominant chord now. We're gonna add the ninth there, so we're gonna play. Okay, so again, instead of the third at the top, we add the ninth at the top. Great sound. Okay, so then it's our minor seven with the added ninth in it. Again, watch out for these bars here. That will need specific work to make sure the notes don't bleed into one another. Nice and slow. It's a good idea to tr try and roll like that. Um, that will help to keep everything nice and clean. So, this is just one particular picking pattern applied to three different arpeggios and then extend the arpeggios just to create um, a bit more colour uh, with the sound. Um, remember, you don't have to practice them f across all six strings. You can do them you know, with a root on the fifth. Uh, but the reason I chose six strings, it just covers all six strings. It's a little bit more challenging to do than the... the uh, that one. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging, so... I like to challenge myself and I like to challenge you guys as well. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up um, today's lesson. I'm going to take this a little bit further. I'm going to show you lots more hybrid picking ideas because I'm really, really digging uh, pretty deep um, with this kind of thing at the moment. I'm really loving the sound of, of these kind of cascading arpeggios. So um, look out for the next lesson. I'm going to talk about applying it to pentatonics. I hope you can join me. Um, if you get the opportunity, head on to my website. It's currently 20% off, and it's a great way to support what I do. So uh, head over there for downloadable lesson content. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I will catch up with you in the next one. Cheers, guys.